In this recording, I'm going to talk about root workers. Now, what is a root worker? The word already said it, root worker. It's someone that works at the root. So it's a pillar of a system. Look, if you have a bakery, for example, and you have the bakers that work over there, the bakers are the root workers because it's a bakery. Without bakers, you have no bakery. You get it? If you have a, if you have, a, I'm gonna say, if a pharmacy is somewhere, then you need to have the people that deliver the med medicine or the pills. Because without pills, you can't have any pharmacy. So the deliverers of the pills are the root workers. Because you can have people work at the pharmacy to sell things, but there needs to be something to sell. So a root worker is someone that's active at the root of a system or at the root of an institution. In ancient Babylon, yet had uh, Nimrod, who was the emperor, you had uh, the priest class, and you had the shamans. The shamans were the root workers of Babylon. They were the local stakeholders of the Babylonian Empire, or the Sumerian Empire, if you want to call it. When Nimrod extended his rule towards the Nile River at the Mizraim tribe, he established what we call ancient Egypt. And in ancient Egypt, this continued. You had Pharaoh, and you had the priest class, and below the priest class, you also had the shamans at the root level. That means at the level of the low, uh, of the peasants. The shamans are those active at the peasant level. They're not nobles, they're not warriors, they're at the, at the peasant level. Okay? So, shamanism has been around ever since the flood of Noah. Or I'm saying ever since Nimrod established Babylon. I'm not going too much into Nimrod in this video, okay, because so, so I'm not going to make it about him. About shamanism, shamanism really comes down to the following. The paranormal, that's evil spirits, they need to win the trust of the human population. Because evil spirits don't have the resources to force their rule on mankind all the time. They can't. They are very limited. They are parasites, so they are feeding off the human population. Before the Greek Empire, before this male-centered occultism, you had the misuse of femininity. That's what Babylon is based on, the misuse of femininity to trap the male population. Okay, so shamanism is in line with the misuse of femininity. When the Greek Empire was established and things became heliocentric, it was all centered around um, toxic male energy. That's what this was, it became centered around. Now, shamanism survived uh, the Greek Empire. It passed through the Roman Empire and still exists till this day, but it's not that popular as it used to be. For example, during the Roman Empire, during the Roman era, if you lived in uh, Britain at the time, it was common for you to go to a local, what they would call medicine man or local um, quote-unquote physician, who he wasn't really a physician, but he was the local shaman of the village. Where it came to, where it was about the harvest of your field, or it was about your marriage, you needed counseling, you went to a shaman. The shaman was the psychologist, the psychiatrist, he was also the shoulder to cry on, kind of. He was actually the maternal figure in the community. What do I mean by maternal figure? It means that just like infants cleave unto their mothers for comfort, the shaman was the comfort figure in the community. A shaman could either be a male or a female, but they are in line with Babylon, not with Greece. The world system is Greek. Babylon is 
before the Greek Empire, but Babylon's tradition of misusing femininity is still around, and shamanism is in line with this. That's why I, I say they are the maternal figures. They provoke this infant, um, I'm sorry, this infant uh, dependency that all human beings have. They trigger it to win the trust of the population. And the demons are happy with this because now they can use a shaman to guide the community. So, in let's say if you lived in the Roman era in Roman Britain, you had the shaman. For everything, you went to the shaman. You had the Greek gods. The ten, yeah, the, yeah, the temp, yeah, temples to Venus, Saturnus, Uranus, Pluto. Yet you, you had all those Roman temples over there. You also had some minor temples of um, Celtic deities that you could go to. But often you had to pay the priests of those temples to do us to do you a service. Now the the word times you also paid the shaman, but you often pay the shaman in a sense of you gave them herbs or you give them some of your crops or you give them some of your fine clothing so it wasn't as much a business as action while religion was so a shaman isn't really a religious figure in the sense that he or she enables a uh, religious institution the shaman is a pseudo religious individual that all the function in an informal setting now there are regulations and rules for shamans who can be wrong but it's all to secure the trust of the population that is what's all about so that's how it was in the roman era in the medieval era throughout the world whether you were in europe or in in, in china or in the western hemisphere you still had shamans around however due to the rise of the real christianity i'm not talking about roman catholicism Due to the rise of the gospel, shamanism became suppressed. Everywhere where the gospel was preached, people began to ban shamans. So shamanism um, began to die out as a social uh, phenomenon. It didn't die out completely, but it began to fade away. Because instead of relying on a shaman, people were now praying to, to God directly through Christ. And people began to realize, though to the influence of the gospel, that the shamans were holding on to a system, not really a system, they were holding on to a tradition that was not effective and it was not good for women. Remember, Babylon is all about the misuse of femininity. And the gospel honors God's design. God's design is male and female, so females are also honored by the gospel. Right? So where the gospel is preached, the female is honored also according to Christ's design. And Babylon is all about the misuse of femininity. So Babylon is all about toxic femininity. So if shamanism is about toxic femininity and the gospel is preached that honors true christ centered femininity, that means that the gospel is a light that opens people's eyes that shamanism is harmful to females. And the men that worship a God began to ban shamanism and, and shamans from amongst them now now you know the history and the role of shamanism now i want to make one thing clear here not all shamans are evil in the sense that they want to do evil okay they there are many shamans that are genuinely concerned with the community and they want to help and be part of the community they're even willing to sacrifice uh their own interest for the community. Those are honorable traits, but the big problem is that they are not Christ-centered. So what they are involved in is evil and they often are not aware that what they're involved in is evil. But here's the thing, you don't have to be stupid to be scammed, okay? Some shamans are quite intelligent, but intelligence doesn't help if you are in darkness, if you have lack of knowledge. Look, many folks that become shamans are tricked into thinking that they are preserving their cultural her heritage and preserving the values of the community. That's how many are tricked into becoming shamans. Many are not aware what it really is they're involved in. They think they are worshiping their ancestor or nature spirits or they're just managing the energies of the community. Some folks 
after years being a shaman, they realize that what they're involved in is demonic. It's evil. And they leave it all behind. But most people that become shamans, they're not aware of what they're involved in. But whether they're aware of it or not, it doesn't change that the thing they are involved in is, is dangerous. Now, about shamans as root workers, what is the relevance today? There is an increasing demand for shamans in today's world, in the 21st century. You may think, Rashid, why is there an increased interest in shamans or increased demand? I'll explain why. Postmodern society, which is what Western society is, is all about material gain and maximizing physical pleasure, especially sexual pleasure. That's what it's all about. But this materialistic way of thinking is the is inhumane and it's dehumanizing people. It's objectifying females and it's um, treating men as trash. So this postmodern culture is quite depressing. But most people don't see it's depressing. But to um, I'm say to mask the depression, there's consumerism. You have a consumption society in which people consume and consume and consume. And you have mainstream media, mainstream sports that feed into this. That's why Hollywood is there. It's the entertainment industry to cover up the depression of postmodern culture. Postmodern culture isn't really a culture. It's a depressive, or a, it's a collective depression that people don't want to acknowledge what it is. So in this collective depression, at least in countries where this collective depression is high, people want a way out. But because many churches are part of this collective depression, people tend to think that uh, the way of the cross, which is Christ, is not trustworthy. So in this confusion, because many of many people that claim the name of Christ or, or also contribute to this collective depression, people don't want anything to do with the depression anymore. They really want a way out. And in this way out, people are looking for the enemy comes with his uh, solution, that's shamanism. And shamanism works. It works. But and let me say this, it works also because there is no formal institution with violence behind it. When it comes to warlocks, there is violence behind them. When it comes to inaugurated witches, there's a lot of narcissistic um, manipulation behind it. When it comes to the shadow government, Oh dear, you have child sacrifice kinds of weird things behind it. When it comes to neo-shamanism, I'm not the shamanism of the day, not the shamanism of the past, because the shamanism of the past also contained blood sacrifices, um, sexual violence, and all of that. The neo-shamanism of the day, I'm saying the shamanism of the present, which is a more, um, it's a more debate, uh, let's say it's a light version of the original that was there in the past, in previous eight, previous centuries. Neo-shamanism is popular because it's at the root level. It's personal, it's intimate. It stands around you. Postmodern culture makes you think you're nothing, that you're not important, that your only purpose is, is to have a nine to five job, pay bills, and then you die. And you have a few happy moments in between. Neo-shamanism tends to heal the wounds caused by postmodern culture, but it never really heals the wounds and just uh, gives you relief from those wounds. That's why, for example, in the black community in the United States, you have many black women that used to attend church. They're now into shamanism and it's quite popular. They felt misunderstood by church. They've been lied and deceived by those pagan pastors. And because they can't see the difference between real Christianity, which is the revelation of Christ, and the counterfeit of it, they now think that everything that's related to Christ is bad. So when they got instant answers through fortune tellers, because shamans are fortune tellers, they thought this is it. This is close to our roots. This is there's nothing to do with the quote unquote white man's religion. Even though Christ himself was not white, but okay, that's another subject. That's why many black women are drawn into neo-shamanism. 
neo shamanism even though it's not the shamanism of the past it's still dangerous because you're involved with demonic powers it goes like this today you go to a shaman let's say you are a businessman okay but you don't want to be part of a warlock cabinet because you see that those men are going through very weird rituals they have to go through trauma rooms dark rooms all of that you think no 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 not doing that but you also don't want to be involved with church because you see that in church um there's many there's many political games that are going on so another option for you is to go to a shaman and in korea this is quite common i had to read a book about an anthropologist that did anthropological research to shaman, neo-shamanism in Korea. I had to do it for my bachelor's degree, so I know about shamanism in Korea. And I've been to Korea uh, twice, and I saw shamanism is active there. Neo-shamanism, I mean. In Korea, it's this quite popular. Let's say you're a businessman. Let's say your name is Jung. I'm making up a Korean name now. And you, Jung, you're a businessman. You want more success in your business. You go to a shaman, which is off often was often female in Asia, often the females are shamans so the female receives you in her office and you tell her that about your business and then she tells you shut up and then she begins to chant in some weird in some classical korean um, dialect and then the, the, the spirits speak to her and the demons begin to reveal her things about your life and about uh, the people around you and then the shaman would tell you, June, you have friends you need to lose because those friends are going to turn on you. Now they're friends with you, you go with them to the pub, things are fine. The moment you get a few more money, a few more cash, you, the moment your cash flow increases through your business, those people become homicidal towards you. And the demons even point out to her who those friends are. The demons even call them by names, by their names. And the June, June, that businessman is so impressed by that female shaman because she knows so much. So the businessman gives some offerings to the shaman as thank you. It's not directly money. And then he takes the charm and he enacts it on the business and he indeed he cuts off those friends that were mentioned by the shaman. And things go well with this business. So now June has confidence in a shaman and now Jung is going to tell other people in his family that this woman is a real deal then more people come to her and that's how demons trap many in the occult similar things happen in the caribbean i've given examples of that before shamanism i'm saying the new version of it it's really a watered down version of shamanism Neo-shamanism is popular though to the defects of postmodern culture. It's the defects that people don't want to acknowledge. People, tend to, people pretend as if postmodern culture is the ultimate state of being that humankind has reached. Because we have mobile phones today, we have instant communication, instant music, instant food. So people, people think that postmodern culture is the thing. If, and by doing that, they are ignoring all the defects of it. Satan does not ignore its defects. He and the beast, they come up with plans to use that def those defects to keep people trapped. That is what it's all about. So what do you do with a root worker? You're not going to hate them. You're not going to turn on them. You're not going to operate in any negative way towards them. No, they're human beings too. Most of them are deceived. If the spirit leads you to mention to them that what they're involved in is dangerous you do it if all spirit tells you to leave it alone you leave it alone meanwhile you lower your contact with such people because even if they don't have a negative heart they're still operating in negativity and they're still used by negative spirits do not get deeply involved emotionally with such people avoid them as much as possible even if your relatives amongst you especially your relatives because make no, no mistake about it those familiar spirits that they communicate with will reveal things about you to them if you keep hanging around them because if you keep hanging around them 
that's the same as being involved with them. And when you are involved with them, the unclean spirits gain access to you and unclean spirits begin to screen your life, screen what's going on. And whatever they see while screening, because the demons will see far more than you know, and they will tell those things to that shaman. So that shaman suddenly may be aware that you're about to go to Fiji for, ho for your holidays. For some, it can be that you, that, that one of your um, cousins, female cousins, is a shaman. And you think, ah, oh, she's just into this because she uh, wants to be part of a subculture. You don't think anything serious of it. But then one day, she tells you, have fun in Fiji. And you think, what? You haven't told anyone that you bought your plane ticket to, to Fiji. But she knows it. And then you're completely upset, thinking, how does she know that I'm about to go to Fiji? You don't have her on social media because she's not really on social media. So you think, how can she know? It's the unclean spirits that revealed it onto her. And the way, way it works is that because you're so upset because she knew you're about to go to Fiji, now you are shocked and now you want answers. And while looking for answers, this, those same unclean spirits will send people your way to lead you into the occult. I'm telling you, lower your contact with shamans. Do not keep them as friends. Not because you loathe them, not because you look down on them, not because of any of that, but because of safety's sake. What they, who they are involved with, the beast of evil spirits, they are dangerous. You can pray for them on their behalf, on a distance, but remember they are root workers of the paranormal. And because they're root workers, you often don't see the danger coming. And that's why the enemy uses neo-shamanism today to trap many people. And that's why neo-shamanism is so successful in trapping people. Because folks don't see the harm coming. Okay. That's it for this recording. Keep agreeing with Christ and be at peace.